All right, so we're gonna get started with the mashed potatoes first. And we're gonna peel them. I'm just gonna peel four extra large potatoes. And we're gonna put them in a pot of cold water with 10 cloves of garlic. And, you know, I don't know, a pinch or so, some kosher salt. I always cook with kosher salt. I don't like to cook with table salt. It's, it's not my thing. So what we'll do it for each of the potatoes. It's real simple. Peel it, quarter it, and do that with all four. That's all you need is four, it'll be plenty. Um, and you get them, put them in the pot, cold water, salt, garlic, and medium heat and let it boil uh, until they're fork tender. So now we're gonna produce a little bit of prep work. Now that we got the potatoes going, I'll let them do it. We're gonna get the carrots chopped up and our onions. The onions are gonna be one of the first things we actually cook. We're gonna cook the bacon first and then use the grease and drippings from the bacon to cook the onions in and then the meat. But we're gonna get the carrot. If you wanna get it cut, I'm gonna show you the size that you're looking for. You want to kind of match it with the size of your pea there. So it's not going to, you're going to kind of chop it up small. Just like this. So if you cut in half and then cut the halves in half and then give it a nice little run through with your knife, you'll be looking for it to be about that size. Um, y'all can see and I'm gonna do three carrots you know three good sized carrots you know bigger the better so. all right so now we're just gonna chop up the onions get that ready do a little prep work and then we're gonna cut up some bacon um, like I said you're gonna chop up the onions you're not gonna mince or dice them you don't need them to be really small you want to kind of be big um, for when we go to brown them So I'm gonna take an onion, just like that. And of course, you can you break these up and you get them in the pot, but you're looking for them, you know, big old chunks like that. And of course, that's layered, so there's gonna it'll get a little bit smaller. But my point is, is you're not looking for. You're not looking for real small cut sizes. You want them to be big. Um, when we get them put in the pot, put them in the oil, start browning them. So now we're going to get some bacon chopped up and then we're going to actually start cooking. I use Wright, so uh, just like this brand. But you, I, you just grab, I grab four strips of bacon and get, get the thick cut. I don't like the little thin stuff, and uh, just just cut it up in small little strips, um, probably about a quarter inch, maybe a little less each. And it's all right if it's all bunched together because as it cooks and fries, it's gonna separate itself. All right, now that we've gotten our pan hot and again using cast iron, my preferred type of pot to cook in. Uh, I can cook and bake in it, so after we get the filling in, instead of having to put it in another pan and dirty up another dish, I'll just put the mashed potatoes right on top of it, pop it, pop it in the oven, and everything will be good. So that probably could have been a little hotter, but... Oh well, it wasn't. So we're just gonna let the bacon fry, and I think we all know how to let bacon fry. We're just just gonna cook, and then when it is, we'll remove it, add a little bit more oil, and get the onions going. All right, so as the bacon's getting done, we're gonna we take it out of the pot using a slotted spoon. 
I say use a slotted spoon because you want to retain as much of the baking grease as you can in your pot for cooking. We'll set that there. Now we're going to add some, a little bit of oil. Again, I'm not very good at measuring things, or I don't measure things. We'll add our onion to it. Give it a quick stir. Kind of coat everything up with the grease and oil. And then we're going to grab our kosher salt, and we're going to add about a teaspoon to it. Just, uh, again, don't measure, I just kind of do things. I've gotten pretty good about not making things too salty. And we're going to let these onions cook for about five or seven minutes. Um, here, I got it on medium-high heat. My dial says high, 876, medium, 4, 3, 2, simmer, low. So I got it on 7 right now. That seems to do the trick. So we're going to do this until it starts to brown. And then when it does, we're going to add some sugar to it. And that's going to start to allow the onions to caramelize. And then we'll go ahead and get the meat added in. So as the onions start to brown, we're going to uh, add the sugar. The reason I've added the salt earlier to the onions is because it draws water out. It draws the moisture out of the onion and allows it to start to brown. Um, so we're going to add just a little bit, it's about a teaspoon, maybe a little less, of sugar to the onions. And I use yellow onions. Yellow onions are a sweeter variety. And so they're going to caramelize and get these to be really tasty. If it wasn't for me cooking this, I could literally eat caramelized onions as a meal. They're so good. So let me just get this stirred up. In here and give it about three minutes or so and they're going to caramelize themselves and then we're going to add the ground beef. And then we'll add the carrots and the peas. Um, you don't have peas, you don't like peas. Um, I would say try them first to this. Uh, they don't really, they get, they get cooked very well so they're not mushy so they don't, or they get mushy so they don't really pop in your mouth. I know my wife says that's why she doesn't like them. <laughs> Lots of jokes can be made there. Um, anyway, but you can also use green beans. So <laughs> And yeah, this also reminds me of of a good joke of what do you call a seven course Irish meal? Uh, it's a six pack of beer and a potato. <laughs> so we're going to get the beef added in here. I would prefer fresh beef. I always prefer fresh meat over uh, previously frozen, but well. You buy them both like I do, um, that's not always going to happen. So, well, it's going to take about five or seven minutes for this to brown, but we're going to get all this ground beef. And I, I use ground sirloin, so that's the 90-10 mix. Uh, it's not the super lean, but it is, uh, it is a good ratio. You're not going to get too much... Uh, fat cooked off and you know, it's going to have a nice flavor of meat. The nice thing is this meat wasn't frozen that long so it was still pretty nice and red fresh looking. So we got it broken up a little bit here and mixed in with onions so I'm going to let it sit here and cook and We'll be back. Uh, we'll be back when it's starting to brown. We'll get the peas and carrots added in and the garlic. All right. So the meat is not getting nice and brown. Cook well. So we're gonna add the veggies. Oh, that's great. Don't wipe away. 
anyway, so we'll get those stirred in and we're going to add about two cloves of garlic minced up there. Or a teaspoon if you buy the jar of stuff like I do. Because I'm lazy and don't like to steal garlic. Every once in a while, if I'm grilling, I will use real garlic, but this time I just use a jar of stuff because. Like I said, it's easy. We're gonna let that cook for another about five minutes until it gets soft. Uh, we're gonna check our potatoes here because they're starting to boil. Um, you know, they're getting there, not quite. You want them to be fork tender, which means you can actually cut it or with the fork. And we'll, it will get that drained, put back in there, and add some salt, pepper, butter, sour cream, all that good business, so we can get our mashed potatoes made. All right, so now I think our potatoes are going to be done. Let me check them. They are. So we'll take the lid off, turn that off, and then drain them. Make sure the water's out. And then we're going to dump them back in. Just like that. And put the lid on them. And then we're going to add our half stick of butter to it Some salt and pepper I'll just go ahead and add everything at once. You can add this later if you want to. Um, it's not that important because I just add a little now and then if I need it a little later for consistency purposes, I will add some more broth to it. I usually add, I try to, just because I'll go overboard real easy with butter and sour cream. That's why I kind of do measure that. I just use a quarter cup scoop because it fits nice and I'm just, I just get nice little two full scoops. You just let it sit there um, until you're ready to mash it and when I say mash it uh, you can use a old fashioned potato mash which I don't know where mine is or you can use a blender. Now that our uh, And veggies are getting cooked nice. We're going to start working on making the sauce. So for that, to get it thick, and there's a bit of grease in there. So, you know, how you make gravy or, you know, a base for something, you use grease and flour. So put a nice little... Okay, I use a tablespoon spoon scoop for that. A flour. And I usually do a two to, or two to one... Tomato to flour ratio. And let's see here. It's good enough. Mm. And you want to get it all mixed in very well. You don't, you don't want any flour clumps, which you shouldn't really have any, only using a tablespoon or so of flour. It's not like you're using a whole bunch. But you do want to get that tomato paste worked in and nice and evenly coated all over your meat. 
and your vegetables. It's going to get really thick and it's going to get really sticky and then, so that is the perfect opportunity to grab your Guinness and put that in there. Guinness, nice malty beer. See, I'm drinking a midnight oil right now. It's a nice good stout, but I'm not going to cook with it, mainly because... Hey, it tastes good. I, I like to drink it. I don't like to drink Guinness. And it has uh, coffee in it. So you don't have to add this slowly or anything like that. It's not like you're making a roux where you want it to take and you want everything consistency to bloom well. So I'm just gonna add this beer. You can use it to kind of, since it's wet now, though, anything that might have stuck to the bottom of your pot, go ahead and scrape it up and let it cook. Let it cook for a good three or four minutes. You want the alcohol to cook off. Uh, you, want the, you want everything to thicken up really nice before we add the bacon and the rosemary. And a little bit more pepper to it. Well, we haven't added any pepper, but add a little pepper to it and we'll salt the taste. So we've got it cooking really nice. It's got a really nice consistency right now. So we're gonna add the last few things. Add the bacon back in that we cooked earlier. I'm going to use a broth. I don't usually measure a whole lot, but I do measure broth, kind of. I use about a half a cup. Um, if it's already, if it's pretty thick and it's, I'll use a little, you know, right at a half cup. If it's got a really nice consistency, or even if it's a little, what I think is runny. I'll add uh, a little less. That time I added just a little less. It was more than a third, but less than a half. And then we're going to add the rosemary. Um, again, you know, probably too much, but that's a good amount right there. Let's we'll get it in there. Rosemary is great, it, it goes good with anything. <laughs> I love it on chicken, I love it on beef, I love it on pork, I love it in my shepherd's pie. I'm just going to let this cook. To about, for about 15 minutes, I'm actually going to turn it down to simmer. And it's just going to sit here uncovered, and it's going to simmer for 15 minutes. So it gets nice and thick. Um, and that's going to be, like I said, this is your filling, this is your, like, your base. So you don't want it to be runny, especially when it sits in the oven, because if it does, it's going to, it's just going to ruin the shepherd's pie. Another thing I don't have, it's a little like individual cast iron dishes, but I've seen it done before I've actually used potato skins um, to shell this filling out in and put mashed potatoes on top of that and bake them so there's a lot of different ways you can do the shepherd's pie it's one of my favorite meals it's so versatile there's so many ways to make it but this is how we're doing it today so we're gonna get our mashed potatoes while we're waiting on our filling to coat we do a couple things Turn the oven on the bag. 350 is fine. We're going to go ahead and make our mashed potatoes. And uh, you can do it with a little hand mixer, which is usually what I like to do. Um, but for this, you know, by keeping a little consistency with your 
the ground beef and your vegetables and everything and having a little chunk to it I'm using a, a hand masher works pretty good so you're just going to work it what your way in there stir everything up make sure everything's nice and even you want the same flavor profile in every bite you take and that's work and you don't want like a real you don't want that thick starchy one that's why I don't use gold potatoes for this I don't use cream either. I mean, I use sour cream. I don't use like whipping cream. So you want it to be able to, like, you know, just fall off. That's a nice consistency. So when you're trying to spread it around the top of the filling, and y'all see how that works here in a bit. All right, so this is done done simmering it's got a nice consistency to it looks like it's just meat and carrots and peas and you can see the onions and trust me you'll taste the bacon in there um, I always give it right before I start putting the mashed potatoes on there I let a little just a little bit of the heat come off of it so it's not fresh off the stove and I give it a, I smooth it out and give, give the sauce a taste, make sure, you know, I don't need to add anything. In this case, it's pretty good. And then just start adding um, the mashed potatoes. Just, just spoon it on there. You know. Don't glop it down or anything like that. I'm just lay it on there and smooth it out. Also, while things were cooking, I tried to clean up so I wouldn't have a messy kitchen because my wife, you know, she likes to bitch about me making a mess. She's not wrong. I do. But I come by it honestly. My uh, my mother's a messy cook, and my grandmother's a messy cook, and I'm sure you know. You go back 250 years, you got a bunch of messy cooks. You know, I just happen to be the male in our modern society that knows how to cook, because you know, my wife thinks that the smoke detector is the timer, it lets you know when the food's done. <gasps> I'm just kidding. She actually knows how to cook. She can put a waffle in the toaster oven and she can heat Prego from a jar. And even that's rude and demeaning because she's standing right over there and she's going to beat me later. Um, so if y'all see me in the next few days and I have bruises, she'll know why. Mm, potato Are you going to watch this, you think? So, then we're going to take it. I don't, no, I don't really have to show you all how to open the oven, but move out of the way, Allie. Let's take it. Throw it in there for 45 minutes, and we'll pull it out. Add some cheese to it. And then we'll eat it. All right, so our timer's going off, and we're gonna pull it out of the oven. I don't know if y'all can see that or not, but we'll shut up. And it's a little starting to brown up top. We've got a little bubbling action going on that's spread out to the mashed potatoes. So, 
What we're gonna do now, we're just gonna take the cheese. Spread it on top. You can shred your own if you want to. I like to buy the pre-shredded because again, well, same reason why I use pre-cut garlic. It's easier. Might cost a little bit more. I don't care. So we're gonna put a nice little healthy layer of cheese on there. And it's gonna take about 10, 15 minutes for that to melt night real nice. But yeah. That's all we want is for it to melt real nice, so we'll put it in there. I'll go ahead and set my timer for 10 minutes and we'll reevaluate then. So the thing's good, we're gonna open it up. 10 minutes later. Nice little melted cheese and we're gonna add some parsley to it it's more as a garnish it's not really anything else but it makes it look good and adds a little bit more flavor to it we just sprinkle that on top like so and then we'll eat Hey, I have fun doing this. I love to cook. Uh, it's one of my passions. Um, don't like to serve people. Don't want to own a restaurant. But hey, if anyone learned something, that's great. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Hope you drank a little bit and got a little drunk. I got a nice little buzz going on. Um, like I said, I have fun doing this. Uh, so uh, if anyone wants to ever come join me, cook some shit together, I would love to do that. Um, like I said, it's fun for me. So, um, almost as good as watching sports. Not quite as much, but you know, hey, like I said, I do like doing it. It's our final product in a cast iron pot. I'm going to eat it. I'm going to enjoy it. And I'll take another video, a quick pic of it to show you all what it looks like going down my, in my mouth and down in the gut. Y'all have a great night. So the last thing before we uh, cut this off for the night is got to set the plate, ready to eat. If I can actually grab a plate. This is delicious, one of my favorite meals, and I hope y'all all enjoy it as much as I do.